Hello, and welcome to another episode of Fantastic Stories from Horizon Mexico. We're Angel and Maya. We're filling in for your regular hosts Calandria and Oscar, while they, uh, sort some things out. Oh really? So this substitution has nothing to do with someone in the highly discriminating Forza community, giving the first episode a thumbs down review, after only 7 views. Well, perhaps. Frankly, it's also possible that Oscar himself posted a thumbs down after what happened in the last episode. In any case, we'll try something a little different this time. Instead of one story, we'll explore a series of five quick scenes, like vignettes. Sounds good, Maya. Let's go! From the window of a moving vehicle, the assortment of people and animals in the Horizon 5 game simulate a reasonably normal sense of life. But linger too long in one place, and you will discover that the effects quickly wear off. In some cases, the scene becomes comical. Hey pal, can I get a little help here? Others have a slightly creepier overtone. In this episode, we intentionally overstay our welcome, as we probe deeply into the wonderfully eccentric activities of some of the characters that you encounter in Horizon Mexico. Start us off, Angel, while I figure out how we ended up here. You bet. Our first vignette takes place along the west coast. Every day, Regina Maria Ibarra steps out onto her doorstep and stares at a pair of allegedly marked cardboard boxes. As Regina stands in the doorway, she appears to be running an inner dialogue. One important detail here is that these boxes sit on the interior side of Regina's locked gate. Clearly this is no ordinary delivery. One could argue that Regina is a woman who feels she has been wronged a few too many times, and that somewhere along the line, she decided to take drastic measures to exact her revenge. The deadly contents in these two boxes were delivered to her under the cover of darkness. They remain here in the driveway, waiting to be carefully unpacked and purposefully assembled by a person bent on doing serious harm. However, Regina is not a woman completely without conscience. Day after day, rain or shine, she stands here, quite literally on the threshold, struggling with her demons. Today is the day they'll finally realize who they're dealing with. Today is the day they'll pay for what they've done. Yes indeed, every last one of them. Oh, but the children. What about the children? Forget them. Why should I care? Nobody cared about me when I was a child. Not true, Gina. What about old Nanny? Oh, Nanny put on a good act, but deep down, she was just like the rest of them. Yikes. Let's move on, shall we? Sure. We travel next to a building construction work site in Mulege. As the newest and least experienced member of the Rojas Brothers construction crew, Cobert often finds himself the recipient of practical jokes. But this time, his co-workers have gone too far. The crew chief left Cobert up here on the newly poured concrete roof of this building, with instructions to keep neighborhood kids away until the team gets back from lunch. The team departs in the company van, taking the ladder with them. They enjoy a long, leisurely lunch break while the concrete sets around poor Cobert's feet. Cobert shifts uncomfortably as wet concrete seeps through his worn-out boots into his socks. He is very eager to prove his dependability to the crew. But doubt creeps into Cobert's mind as he anxiously wonders, when are they coming back? Not far away, we encounter a young couple in a weedy, unkempt courtyard. Veronica and Lucas spend their days and nights here in an endless waiting game, unwilling actors in their own, little theater of the absurd production. The abundant fruit offerings at this stand are so close, that Veronica can almost taste the sweet fragrant citrusy scent. But where is this stand's vendor? Surely he or she cannot have gone that far away. Their conversation likely goes a little something like this. Come on, Hironica, just take the damn apple. I'm tired of waiting. If the fruit vendor hasn't come back by now, I don't think they are coming back at all. Nobody would leave a whole fruit cart intended like that. 
It's fine. Sit tight. I'm just going to give them a few more minutes. Why can't you just leave them some money so we can leave? It feels like we've been here for an eternity. Every successful dive bar needs a hired hand around, whose sole function is to keep the peace. The establishments at the Horizon Festivals are no different. This serious looking chap has got his eye on you, and there's no escaping his steel gaze. We don't like your kind around here. Move along now, but the old here is gonna be trouble. Our last vignette is an age-old situation in an equally ancient setting. This dedicated duo sits on the edge of the ruins at Atlantis de Tula. Restless movements suggest an in-depth, but apparently one-sided conversation. Only one thing could perpetuate such a drawn-out exchange in this remote location. That's right. This is Olivia. She's distraught because she has had yet another awful fight with her boyfriend, Antonio. This time is really a... She just can't take it anymore. Antonio is siempre un idiota. Carlos listens patiently through the night as Olivia spouts off an endless list of Antonio's faults and wrongdoings, highlighted with periods of intense swearing and plenty of tears. But all that is quickly forgotten when Antonio shows up in the morning in his souped-up car, looking for Olivia. Oh, Carlos, look, Tony is here. He must have been out looking for me all night. Gosh, that's so sweet. This might lead Carlos to wonder if he should have spent these countless hours differently. But the situation will repeat itself over and over again. Because Carlos and Olivia are the very definition of best friends forever. And when I say forever, I mean forever. So there you have it. A closer look at some of the many unusual things you'll discover when you find your way off the beaten path and stray into the mysterious realms of Horizon Mexico. So next time you find yourself between events, stop a while, send up the drone, and take a look around. A whole other world awaits you outside your car. So long, and see you next time.